When exactly someone decided to sell tickets and smash cars on purpose is not certain. But one man alone is largely credited with bringing the sport into the mainstream. His name is Larry Mendelson, and it happened at Long Island's Islip Speedway in the late 1950s. I don't think that he invented it. It'd be hard to say who invented it. I've seen movies back in the 40s with wrecking cars and stuff. So I don't think he invented it, but he put it on the map. And I, I'm sure, I'm almost positive that Larry Mendelson went and, and uh, patented the idea for Demolition Derby. Before becoming a promoter, Larry Mendelson was a stock car racer. But by all accounts, even his own, not a very good one. Legend has it that one night in 1957, while racing at Islip Speedway, he lost control during a race. The car careened into the bleachers and the small crowd went wild. They were more interested in the twisted car in the stands than the race continuing on the track. This gave Larry a great idea. Why not stage an event where vehicles were intentionally crashed? He wasn't much of a stock car driver, but he sure was a tremendous promoter. He took over the reins of the speedway, and he decided, well, how can I improve this place? And he decided, well, hey, if I staged auto accidents, I could get a lot of people in here, pay good money to see this. And sure enough, he did. I mean, he was probably the finest promoter on the East Coast at the time. Well, it was probably 1962, I believe. Well, probably around 61, 62, he started the first demolition derby. And he ran these ads in the newspaper. Wanted men, not afraid to die, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it, just, it just attracted a lot of people, a lot of drivers. Larry knew that part of the fascination for both drivers and spectators was the seeming recklessness and danger of crashing dozens of cars at the same time. Within weeks, Demolition Derby became one of the biggest draws at Islip Speedway. It was really a tremendous party atmosphere. Everybody went to Islip Speedway to see that show. It was hyped for weeks, and uh, if you had any interest at all, you drove out to the Islip Speedway, you wanted to see this show. Because that place would hold maybe 7,000 people or so. And on, on those nights with the standees, you had about 12,000 people. You brought in demolition on top of that. There were six deep in the turn standing up. They could hardly see, but they were there. And Larry was right. Uh, it sounds stupid, but I'm gonna make a lot of money. And he did, and he did. The idea spread like wildfire all over the nation. Soon, Long Island alone held demolition derbies at Islip, as well as Freeport and Riverhead Speedways. But Larry Mendelson was still showing them how it was done. He continued to come up with ideas to make demolition derby a true contender to other popular forms of racing. The people brought their own cars. Believe it or not, you know, junkyard operators, there were guys in gas stations that had old clunkers. And he divided it into four heat races of 50 cars apiece. And after each race, the guy that was last running, obviously, had won. And he gave them a brand new car to go into the finals. And he paid the winner, the last guy running of the last the feature event, $1,000. And that was big money back in 1963, real big money. I mean, it was a big, big deal back then. And ABC's Wide World Sports saw this, and they came in and started televising it. I mean, it was really tremendous. Demo Derby would reach its height of fame in the 60s and 70s when the races were televised on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Suddenly, the entire nation was watching the excitement live from Islip Speedway. This was the heyday of Demolition Derby popularity on a national level. But as other sports gained popularity, ABC eventually stopped televising Islip Derbies in 1973. And a decade later, due to neighborhood complaints about the noise, Islip Speedway closed its doors in 1985. For millions, it was the end of an era. First thing we see here is the sign that was over the pit gate at Freeport Stadium. Nearby Freeport Speedway had closed down in 1983. Although the Islip and Freeport Speedways no longer exist, racing expert Marty Himes keeps their memories alive at the Himes Museum of Motor Racing Nostalgia in Bayshore, New York. In fact, some say the tracks are literally in his backyard. It really spells it out. Through this gate past the best damn drivers on Long Island and elsewhere too. There's a lot of famous people walked under that sign. These are the original lights that were around Islip Speedway up on the telephone poles. As a matter of fact, the beams that are holding this building up are all built out of original seats from Islip Speedway. That's where I got the lumber. That's the original door from Islip Speedway right here. It was off the Larry Mendelson's office. 
Everything that could possibly be removed by anyone was removed and it's here. Marty started the museum 25 years ago with a single photo of a race car driver. Today, he can hardly find room for it all. And just how does he get it all? You want to know the truth? I just go and take it. That's the original Islip Speedway sign. It was, it was like 25 feet in the air. I went to the state, said I'd like to have that sign. What do I have to do to get it? And uh, the guy tells me there's a, a lot of red tape, insurance and all that. I said, okay, thank you. Went back that night with a pickup truck, acetylene torch, cut the red tape with the blue torch. Yelled one word, timber, and we own it. And you know what? Everybody thinks I did the right thing. There's not a doubt in my mind. Marty often reminisces about the good old days with friends tied to the demolition derbies at the Long Island Speedways, like Charlie Seuss, who was a derby driver in the very early days at Islip and raced in one of Larry Mendelssohn's first demolition derby national championships. His car of choice? A 1930 Model A Ford. Everybody went crazy over the car when I, before we had the race. They uh, wanted to buy it, you know. That was on a wide world of sports. And, uh... Yeah, everybody wanted to buy the car, nobody wanted me to enter it. They voted me best good car, and Larry Mendelson liked it so much, that's why he, he paid me to bring it back the second year. But I didn't do it so good, I bet the axle. Now over here on the left, we have the last set of flags used at Isop Speedway by Mr. Ray Mortarano, and that's him waving them right here. Another of Marty's friends is Ray Mortarano who worked as an official starter at Islip, starting in 1962 when he was just 12 years old. He stayed there for 25 years until Islip shut down. Year in and year out, Ray saw firsthand how racers fell in love with the sport. If you decided that you wanted to run a demolition car, you'd see it advertised, you'd register the car, you'd register your number, you'd follow the rules, you'd prep the car, you'd go out and you race, then you enjoy it, okay? If you don't enjoy it, then you don't do it again, okay? But I'll tell you what, you'll do it once and you're hooked. Today, only Riverhead Raceway still remains on Long Island. They still run demolition derbies and still draw a full crowd of over 3,000 fans. Riverhead during the summer, we'll get, uh, on a Saturday night demolition derby, we'll get 20, 25 cars. And really what it is, it's an unusual spectator sport. And the people are the ones that make it. The fans are the people that make it. If it wasn't for the fans coming out, like any, any type of sport, if the fans didn't come out, they wouldn't be here. Michael Buxa is a longtime derby driver, and today he also announces at Riverhead. I've always enjoyed destruction. It sounds weird, but I, I was never one for speed. I never liked speed, and it was something I could do in my backyard where I didn't have to spend a, a whole lot of money. And it, it seemed the way to go. And after a couple of years, I got really good at it. And when you get good at something, you want to keep doing it. Jim Cromerty has helped keep the sport alive. He and his wife, Barbara, managed Islip Speedway in the 80s, and today they own Riverhead. Demolition Derby is something that anyone who comes to the racetrack can enjoy. Uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, if they don't understand racing, uh, and, and for the first couple of times you come uh, to see a race, it's, it's difficult to tell where the cars are, who's leading, uh, what's going on. Demolition Derby, you can come, and from the first time you see a Demolition Derby, you know what's going on. And, uh, and that's, I think that's the thing that makes it exciting, uh, because it, it just it pertains to everybody. Whether you're five years old or, or, or 90 years old, you can appreciate a Demolition Derby. And if you can legally drive a car, you can actually compete in a demolition derby as well. Oh, you know that. 